Many of you already know that aircraft have multiple sources of power. And in this video, I'd like to talk about the APU. Majority of you already know what it does, but let's get down a little bit deeper into it and its capacity and what its functionality is. APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. Majority of time, it is located in the most aft section of the aircraft. This is when you look at the back of the aircraft, you'll always see a little hole protruding right there. Different shapes and sizes, but most of the time, that's where it lives. Now let's talk about the capabilities and what its actual function is. It's basically another jet engine, but a very small one, depending on the size of the aircraft, obviously. Now one of its main components is obviously bleed air. It provides air to start up engines. The air is tapped off of the compressor section of the APU and is ducted through the aircraft to provide air to the starters of the engine. Also, it provides air to the air conditioning system or the pack system of the aircraft. This is when the aircraft is on ground, it can utilize the APU as a source of bleed air to provide air conditioning. Another source of power is electricity. The APU has a generator or generators depending on aircraft. When on the ground, it can utilize the generator for power source. Let's take a look at this Honeywell 131-9A. This is equipped on a 321neo. It has very much the same components as an engine. As I said earlier, because it is an engine, it has a generator, it has a starter, fuel control, an area to resurface oil, various amount of ducting as well as heat exchangers, and oil coolers, an exciter box, fuel manifolds, a fire protection system, and the obvious exhaust. It also has a capacity of protecting itself via surge valves and a bleed valve where it can actually open up and send the air where it's required within the aircraft. This is where I talked about earlier when it provides air to the air conditioning system as well as the engines for startup. Just a reminder, the APU can also be used in the air itself, but with certain limitations. The APU can use its generator up to any altitude, but when it comes down to pneumatic pressure, it can only use it at around 20,000 feet. The APU generator can supply about 120 kV of AC electrical power when the aircraft is on the ground or during flight. Unlike the generators on the engines themselves, the APU is a constant speed jet, so an IDG style generator is not needed. When we take a look at more modern jets such as the 787, you'll notice it's a bleedless system, so it has to double up on its power, hence why you see two generators, which also act as starters. They're starter generators. Going back to conventional aircraft, in case the APU is inoperative, there's always an option for an air start. They will utilize a ground air cart to provide air to start the engines. Now you ask yourself, how do you even start the APU? Well, that comes from battery power. The batteries provide enough voltage, which is around 24 volts, to give power to the starter. And guess what? Our lovely 777 over here, the starter decided not to work anymore. So guess what? Let's go change it. As I've told you before, the APU is in the, usually in the most aft portion of the aircraft. The 777 has six latches. Those doors will open right up like a clamshell, and we get access to the starter itself. There it is. It's a pretty simple job but could become difficult because the starter is a little bit awkward to hold and it weighs about 40 pounds. After taking all the precautions of pulling the proper circuit breakers and putting the tags on, we start disassembling. We take off the cannon plug and the two main terminals, the positive and negative. Everyone always likes to ask me, why don't you use power tools? No, we can't use power tools, guys. This is sensitive equipment. If I put a power tool on that, there's too much torque. It might damage something. So we just go with the conventional by hand. Once the terminals are removed, now we have to remove the mounting studs, or the nuts, I should say, right there. There's four of them all around. As soon as they're loosened, the starter itself can be turned to the left, and it will release itself. You simply have to just pull it off at that point. Once we got the starter out, there you go, there's the old one right there. We have to make sure the shaft is not damaged. Because if the shaft is damaged, that means the clutch mechanism that's inside the housing is also damaged. We would have to replace that as well, which you can see right there. Believe it or not, it's much like your car. The battery provides power to the starter. The starter turns, engaging the clutch, and the clutch engaging the gearbox, beginning the sequence of events to start the engine. 
luckily the old starter did not shear its shaft so we didn't have to change the clutch on this one so that's good news for us here we go the new starter is in installing the mount bolts which were brand new we don't reuse the old hardware for this one we are provided with brand new hardware with sensitive components like this we'll install new hardware once all said and done everything will be torqued properly you just see me snugging it down i need both my hands to torque obviously putting on the positive and negative terminal leads quick little shout out to capri tools they were nice enough to send this out to me really awesome tools i like them i'll be honest with you it was a bit of a struggle to actually get the starter on because again it's a cramped space environment and to get it fitted on there perfectly and to make sure the o-ring is seated yeah it's a bit of a challenge there's a little, quick little look at the generator right there but all in all it's not a big deal it's not a hard thing to do and the final process is putting the cannon plug back on right there and that should do it after this the next steps is basically to make sure to close up the compartment and we run an operational check which is running the APU, obviously. Taking a moment to enjoy the view, as always. I take great pleasure in what I do and making these beautiful airplanes fly, so sometimes you gotta stop and smell the roses and just enjoy the view. Getting back down off my lift over here and um, getting all the paperwork sorted out. That's the old component right there. A lot of paperwork also goes into this, so yeah. Tracking tags and parts tags and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, thankfully enough, I was with a good partner, helped me out, and a good crew chief. After all said and done, the APU came back online and ready to go. This was a crucial thing because this APU needed to be functioning because this aircraft was flying out to London Heathrow, which was an uh, ETOPS flight, extended operations. So uh, the APU is a very crucial component when it comes down to this. We were all happy that we all got it to work, and it takes a big team effort. So. Hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.